your NVIDIA GPU may be practically worthless going forward. I'm gonna tell you exactly why. Actually, I'm gonna tell you right now. Probably something to do with the VRAM. All planned, obviously. If you look at the stack of like the RTX 30 series, which a lot of people liked when they initially came out, if you take away the cloud of like the GPU shortage, you can see that they were pretty good GPUs at their MSRPs. What we never noticed back then, because we really didn't have any reason to notice it was the lack of VRAM that was going on with these GPUs. I mean, look at even the weird 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the 3060 Ti, which is the better GPU, has only eight gigabytes of VRAM. That's really weird, even though, of course, you can technically explain it based on the amount of VRAM and the memory bus, etc. It's still very, very weird to see that sort of product difference, and it just confuses people, and it makes it seem like the 12 gigabyte of VRAM 3060 is the better GPU. Well, is it? The 3060 Ti was always the better GPU, right? But with a little bit more VRAM, the 3060 is not looking too bad in certain scenarios, even though it is gonna be slower in a lot of cases in terms of pure FPS. What's going on now is that AMD is flaunting their GPUs having more VRAM for the dollar. And that's actually really true, even when you look at the graphs that they present. I mean, most of their GPUs seem to have an adequate amount of VRAM. Even the cheaper, like 6700 XT, has 12 gigabytes. You have to go all the way down to like a 6600 level GPU to, you know, see the 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which there was perfectly acceptable as a lot of people use that for 1080p. Anything from the 6700. 700 XT and up, definitely 12 gigabytes of VRAM is important. And then you see a lot of the important bigger GPUs have at least 16, especially of the RX 6000 generation, like the 6800 and 6800 XT. And then we really start to scratch our heads when we take a look on the NVIDIA side and you see it's a lot different. You're gonna see a lot lower VRAM numbers and a lot of them start at a very high price compared to AMD. It's not until we hit the 4080 at 1199 that we see anything above 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you want a 16 gigabyte plus GPU, you're going to have to buy at least a 4080. Look at the one in third place, 4070 Ti, only 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 799. Another important item here to take note of, it's not only the VRAM amount, a lot of these GPUs are also coming with, frankly, crippled bandwidth and a lot slower memory bus that actually has an effect at higher resolutions. And it's really funny that NVIDIA is the one that's pushing ray tracing and a lot of these really you know high texture type of titles where their GPUs are gonna be the ones that are most limited. It's fine if you have a 4090 and it can handle basically anything out there, but if you have anything underneath a 4080, you're gonna start to have problems even at 1440p, not to mention at 4K. So while AMD never had the fastest VRAM on the block. It seems like at least the lowest speed VRAM is going to be pretty acceptable. It's nothing as bad as some of the stuff we're seeing on the new NVIDIA stuff. And it's also an adequate amount. Most of them have 16, not to mention the new generation, and especially the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX, they have 20 and 24 gigabytes of VRAM. This is an interesting turn of events. I know a lot of people do prefer NVIDIA for for many reasons, but I must say some of these AMD GPUs are looking better now with more VRAM and cheaper pricing. Don't get me wrong, AMD still kept these prices very high when it mattered for a very long time during the GPU shortage. You could not buy a 6900 XT, 6800 XT for anywhere near MSRP or anywhere near these prices. So I don't wanna make it seem like I'm pandering to that side, but it just seems like, let's say if we're being objective, AMD does give you more VRAM, and in a way, they kind of have to give more VRAM, so they have at least some type of benefit over NVIDIA. Otherwise, if they were giving us the same crappy low amounts of VRAM as NVIDIA, they would be basically wiped out even more than they are now in terms of competition, because then NVIDIA would have claim to every single you know performance and hardware metric out there. So at least they kind of have this here. And look, they have to sell these old GPUs. They're not moving off the shelves. GPUs are 
are really selling very poorly right now. So it makes sense that they're trying to push that they have more VRAM. Would have been nice if they tried that same type of energy when gamers actually wanted to buy these GPUs. Now, nobody really wants to buy them anyway. And I'm just pointing out that they have better VRAM. Not meaning that people should go out and necessarily pick up these GPUs. But in terms of what NVIDIA is offering, definitely very not satisfying at all. And it looks like it's even going to get worse with the 4060 Ti having a potential 8 gigabytes of VRAM and even slower memory bit bus for the bandwidth. That's going to be probably a terrible GPU no matter what they price it at. So that's a main issue that we're going through now. High prices and really hobbled hardware that is going to give a big, big problem for future proofing. All of the RTX 3000 series owners right now, they're kind of seeing the reality of what has happened with a lot of these GPUs when they try to play brand new games that are often unoptimized. And in many cases, even when they're better optimized, VRAM usage is still really, really high. So that's why your NVIDIA GPU probably is worth a lot less now in terms of you playing it and gaming than it was when it first came out. So hopefully something changes soon, but it looks like it's only going to get worse within the next few GPU releases. All right, guys, so remote to subscribe, smash that like button and we'll see you guys on the next video.